Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. G here. Hardest working man in the game. 6.58 in the morning. Mr. G is here. Only trying to make sure you get an education. Let's do this. So, quiz review. Right? You took this quiz. Some of you completely blanked out and others knew what you were doing. If you knew what you're doing, very nice. If you blanked out, it's okay. Let's work on it. One thing I don't accept, though, is that these notes were in the last video. If you did not write these notes down or did not have these in your notes, that's unacceptable because you should have them, right? These are the steps you need to solve these radical equations. So if you didn't copy them down, here you go. Pause the video. All right. Now, let's say we want to solve number one. What's the first move we want to do? Isolate the radical, right? So how do we have this question? It is 7a minus 54 minus a equals, I'm sorry, the square root of 7a minus 54 minus a equals negative 6. So, how do we isolate the radical? The first move you're going to want to do is, very simply, plus a plus a. And now what do we get? We get square root of 7a minus 54 is equal to negative 6 plus a. But one thing that you could have done was that, remember, negative 6 plus a is the same as a minus 6, right? This is true, all right? And if you're confused why this is true, raise your hand and I'll show you why. But this will be nicer to have, and the reason will be because right now, what do we need to do? Once we have the, you see the radical is by itself, there's no negative. What do we need to do? We need to exponentiate or eliminate the isolated radical. When we exponentiate, here, this is square root. So what are we going to do to both sides? We're going to square both sides, right? And now here, a minus 6 is nicer to square than negative 6 plus a. But then what happens? This cancels, so I have 7a minus 54 is equal to what is this? So many times I saw too many people say a minus 6 squared is equal to a squared plus 36. You square the a, you square this. This is absolutely wrong. No. I don't know how many times I have to show you this. a minus 6 squared is equal to a minus 6 times a minus 6. You have to FOIL this. Okay? So FOIL it. A times A, A squared. A times negative 6, negative 6A. Negative 6 times A, negative 6A. Negative 6 times 6 is positive 36. By now, you need to know this. It's unacceptable. You need to have this down solid. Okay? So then this is this, right? So we bring this here. Now we have A squared minus 12A plus 36. Okay? Now, in your notes from that lesson, what was the thing? Here we have degree 2. If we have degree 2, what do we want to do? I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to write it down, but try and guess what I'm going to write, okay? The highest exponent in the equation, right? If we look at all the exponents in this equation, if the highest exponent is 2, then to solve this equation, we want 0 on one side. Always, always, always. We have done this so many times. You see here, the highest exponent is 2. We want 0 on one side. So the next question will be, why? And I'll explain why very soon, but let's do this. Let's get 0 on one side. So how do you do it? Here. This a squared is already here. So let's take this other stuff and put it on the other side. So this is minus 7a plus 54. Minus 7a plus 54. Right? We're doing, because here, 7a minus 7a is 0. Negative 54 plus 54, this side becomes 0. And then what are you left with? Here, a lot of you made careless mistakes. a squared, right? Negative 12a minus 7a is negative 19a. 
plus 36, positive 36 plus 54 is positive 90, right? Now, this is it. Now, what's the reason? Why do we want zero on one side? What I want you to do is, I'm gonna pause the video, I want you to think about it. Why do you want zero? Why is this the thing that we want to do? Because if we have zero on one side, we want to see if we can factor this. If this is factorable, then it makes us, it's easier to solve this equation. If you can't factor, then we use quadratic formula, right? So let's get to this position. Right now we're here, right? Right now we're here. We're at a squared minus 19a plus 90. Is it possible to factor this? What's the question you ask in your head? Pause the video for a second and think about it. What do you ask yourself to be able to factor this? Something like this, right? A and A. What do you say? Okay, here. Ask yourself, what two numbers when you multiply them give you positive 90, but when you add them give you negative 19? Maybe it's possible, maybe it's not. Think about it, pause the video. If, if it is possible, it is possible, right? So here, it'll be negative 10 and negative nine. Why? Because negative 10 times negative nine is what? Positive 90. So we satisfied this condition. We satisfied the first condition. Then what's the next condition? When you add these two numbers, it has to give you what? Negative 19, so negative 10 plus negative nine, does this equal negative 19? And it does, it does equal negative 19. If you feel shaky with this factoring, you need to raise your hand and say, Mr. G, I need to work on this right now because I'm under the assumption that you know how to do this. This is algebra one technique, but if you feel like you still need to practice it, no shame and you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? Now, what was the point of getting zero on one side, why is it important? Because once this is zero, right? I have a minus nine, a minus 10. What condition do we use next? Then we use zero product property, right? And then what do we say? We say a minus nine equals zero, a minus 10 equals zero. So then how do you get a by itself? Plus nine plus nine plus 10 plus 10. Now what? a is equal to 9, a is equal to 10. Okay, boom. We went all the way from here, all these steps, to get to this. Does this seem like a lot of work? Almost, maybe, okay? Now remember, you gotta have follow these rules, right? It says isolate the radical, we did that. Exponentiate, we did that. Repeats one and two, okay, we don't need to do that. Step four, solve the resulting equation. We solved it, but then what do you have to do? You have to check your answers. We gotta check for extraneous solutions. So what I want you to do is, before I do it, check that A equals nine works over in this equation. Check if A equals 10 works in this equation, okay? Go, go. Um, here, here it is. I did the check for you, okay? This is the check for a equals nine, and it works. And this is the check for a equals 10, and it works. If you have any confusions on what is happening in this algebra here, you need to let me know, okay? Let's do the next question. Question number two. All right, here, what do we do? We follow our steps, right? What's the first move? Isolate the radical. Is the radical isolated? Yes, it's isolated. So now what do we do? We exponentiate, exponentiate to eliminate both sides. So here, we're gonna square both sides. And what do we get? This cancels the radical, so I have negative 3m plus 10 equals m squared. Okay, now um, it says repeat steps one and two if there are still radicals. There are no radicals. Solve the resulting equation. Okay, how do I solve this equation? What is, 
what did we just figure out? If the highest exponent is 2, what do we want? We want 0 on one side. So let's do it. To get 0 on one side, what would you do? You would do plus 3m minus 10. Plus 3m minus 10, right? So negative 3, and notice that this is the equation, right? Think of this, think of this line that's here, here. Negative 3m plus 3m, this is 0. Positive 10 minus 10, this is 0. So 0 is equal to, now here, can we combine 3m and minus 10 to this m squared? No, they are not like terms, right? You, they're not like terms, so then you just bring everything down. Then m squared plus 3m minus 10. What was the reason why we wanted 0? If it's possible, we can factor. Can we factor, can we factor this the same way we factored this? Are there two numbers? Ask yourself what two numbers when you multiply them give you, in this case, negative 10. In this case, negative 10. But when you add them, you get what? You get 3. Is, are there two numbers? I want you to pause the video and think about it. Can you factor this? Is it possible? And yeah, you can. This is m and this is m. This is positive 5 and negative 2. Right? 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Positive 5 plus negative 2 is positive 3. Why did we want to... Now, once we get this, what can we use? We can use zero pro property to split them, right? And then you get the m minus 2 equals 0, m plus 5 equals 0. So here, this is plus 2 plus 2, uh, minus 5 minus 5, m equals 2, m equals negative 5, right? And here, there we go. We solved, it. We solved the equation, right? Then what's the last move we need to do? We need to check our answers. We need to see which one works. Okay, what I want you to do right now is check it. Right, go ahead and check it. All right, I'm gonna pause the video and check it for you. Plug in uh, two and it works, two equals two. But when you plug in negative five, it doesn't work. You get 5 does not equal 2. Thus, 5m equals negative 5, extraneous solution. Okay? I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, let me know.